Thanks, Alana. Good afternoon and you're welcome to the second of our lunchtime general election debates ahead of polling day two weeks from today. As of today, 16 candidates are battling out in Mayo, a five-seater constituency, this time round, having gained a seat in the constituency review. The latest time for receiving nominations to run for the 34th Dáil is 12 noon tomorrow. Candidates who want to withdraw their nominations have until 12 noon on Monday then to do so. In studio today, we have the Minister of State with responsibility for local government and planning, Castlebar-based candidate Alan Dillon, Eris-based candidate Sinn Féin Deputy Rose Conway-Walsh and Castlebar-based independent candidate Stephen Kerr. Now, what candidates say during the debate is their responsibility. We ask you to be courteous and not to speak over each other. And if any candidate persists, we'll simply cancel your microphone. So we're asking you all to please play fair. Now, candidates, you're all very welcome and we'll get started. And for each candidate to get started, I'm asking that in less than a minute, tell me what's the single major issue for you ahead of polling day, Alan. Good afternoon, Teresa. Um, The single biggest issue I'm hearing on the doorsteps is the cost of living and it's coming up a lot. Uh, everyone is, is affected differently, be it the, the cost of housing, rent, uh, childcare, fuel or, or utility bills. And many factors have influenced the surge in prices, the war in Ukraine, the inflationary crisis uh, and the pandemic. And in fairness, government has responded uh, and taken a number of immediate and long term measures. And that has been seen uh, in the most recent budgets, uh, two consecutive budgets, uh, billion, dollar, billion, billion euro packages uh, in order to address the scale of the challenge. And indeed, families right across the county has seen uh, many of these payments being uh, lodged in their accounts. We've seen 300 euros in food allowance, lump sum, okay. 400 so euros main, the, yeah, in yeah, lump sums for disability, invalidity and blind pension. Issue for you. Okay, Deputy Rose Conway-Walsh, what's the main issue you're you see and is coming before you ahead of polling day. Hi Teresa, I'd say the cost of living as well and I thought one young person put it well to me last night when they were talking about the extortionate costs of rent when they said bypass the paycheck into your landlord's account and that was it. By the time they had paid the rent there was nothing left but there's also in terms of groceries obviously the cost people know when they go into shops. Now part of that as well is the carbon tax and what it takes to transport goods and the and the excise that's on that. Insurance for home and for, for for car insurance, childcare, uh, fuel, the healthcare, disability, student accommodation. Okay, so you're lots of issues, really. You no, know, but, but it all impacts on the cost of living and how people are really trying to survive in this day and age. And the once-off payments don't cut it. Okay, and Stephen, as you go on the door, door to door, what's the single major issue that you're coming across? Thanks, Teresa. Yeah. I mean, I agree that the cost of living is a huge issue and I'd like an opportunity at some point during this chat to discuss that in more detail. Um, through my online media platform, The Irish Inquiry, I've highlighted a, rake, a load of issues over the last couple of years. But in recent times, over the last two years, I suppose, the big issue that I've been highlighting is in relation to uncontrolled mass immigration. The numbers yeah, but I'm asking you what in the run-up to the polling day. What are you meeting most now, not two well, years ago? Well, absolutely. I, I, over the last two years, this is the big issue. This is the big issue that everybody is talking to me about. And it's uh, it's the big issue. It's the only issue, actually, that isn't isn't being spoken about by other politicians, really, to the degree that it should be, to the degree that people in the door think it should be. Uh, and as well as that, it, it never really comes up. In a, It may come up here, I'm sure, but on the likes of RT and remains uh, on a, the state broadcaster, uh, they seem to forget that immigration is a massive, ma- uncontrolled mass immigration. Okay. The numbers of so people that's coming into it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, well, with that then, now just to say, we've asked listeners for questions and we'll try to get through as many as possible of those questions as we can. Minister Dillon, I'm going to start with you. Yesterday, Taoiseach Simon Harris said he doesn't know why Fine Gael expelled Councillor Patsy O'Brien, who's now an independent councillor from the Fine Gael party four years ago. Now, Councillor O'Brien is running as an independent candidate in the general election in this constituency at present. And the basic question, do you know why the councillor was expelled? Well, listen, uh, Teresa, I, I know it was put to the Taoiseach, yes, uh, and uh, I'm not familiar with the actual uh, reason for the internal investigation myself. Uh, I know a complaint was made against uh, Councillor O'Brien uh, back in March 2020, and uh, subsequent, he was expelled in October uh, 2020 following uh, uh, the conclusion of the investigation. 
but I think it's 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 open to, to Councillor O'Brien uh, himself to clarify this before people make their decision uh, on the. Oh, yeah. And in fairness, CDs. we did contact Councillor O'Brien this morning and he declined to comment. So okay. with that, OK, then we'll move on then. Now, in the context of health care, how concerned are candidates about the pressures caused by overcrowding? This is a listener question at Mayo University Hospital. What are you doing to address it? What will you do to address it? How are you going to entice nurses to work in Mayo University Hospital? And then just from one person, he's described himself as an OAP, age 72. He'd been suffering with chest pains. He was brought to Mayo University Hospital. He describes how he'd been in ED for a while. Then he got a bed. Then he went home. He feels just as bad. Uh, he had to get out because the hospital was full. Look, what are you saying, uh, Deputy uh, Deputy Rose Conway Walsh, yeah. to these people? What can you do different as Sinn Féin, or what would Sinn Féin do different in government that would make it better okay. for people in Mayo? Yeah, sure. There's two, there's two issues. Basically, it's the space, so it's the capital investment that's needed in there. But also, we know in Mayo University Hospital at the moment, there are 82 whole time equivalent staff shortage if they were to do st- uh, safe uh, staffing measures. So what we would do is recruit 40,000 healthcare workers uh, over the term of government, but we would deliver as well 5,000 extra hospital beds and 2,000 community beds as well. And that would solve the problem that we have. But and would they come to Mayo and would they work? at Mayo University well, Hospital. Make, You're I'd talking make, national yeah, figures. Yeah, sure. I'd make absolutely certain that they do. And that's not only the, the, the staff for Mayo University Hospital, for Belmullet Hospital, Ballina and Swinford as well, because that's part of the problem. We don't have connectivity between community care, social care and acute care that's needed in the county. It's absolutely been destroyed over the last 20 years. OK. Um, Stephen, have, I'm sure uh, overcrowding in ED at Mayo University Hospital, you have met that on the doorstep too. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, of course, and whether it's uh, hospitals or doctors' appointments, a lot of these issues are a knock-on effect of what I've said previously: our, our uncontrolled mass immigration situation. So, uh, with the healthcare system, huge problems. If you look at the, the budget in 2015, 13 billion budget for the health service in 2015. 20 as of 2023, it was over 23 billion, up 10 billion. Yeah, so uh, they're in, in they're throwing years. money at they're it. Throwing, they're throwing money, but but the thing is, it, it there's a lot of it's complete mismanagement and waste seems to be the problem a lot of the time. Um, now, I want to mention a couple of things on health as well, if I could. Uh, one thing that I don't think any of the candidates running will mention, now there are numerous problems with the, with the healthcare system at the moment, but this is a big one nobody else is going to mention, so I want to mention it. The last two years, we've seen uh, a, a huge rise in excess mortality rates, the, the deaths in this uh, county, in this country. They're off the charts uh, they're unprecedented. We've never seen them before. Uh, and there seems to be no explanation as to why there are so many people dying. Okay, Just so you want year. an answer. We so, don't have it. We so don't no, want to speculate so, on no, answers. No, all I want to say is that I, I will be calling for an independent, a properly independent public inquiry to find out the reason as to those high levels of uh, excess deaths. Okay, Minister Dillon, you are a minister in a government where... Probably the greatest fear of many in Mayo is that they have to get to Mayo University Hospital because they won't get a bed. Not because the care is wonderful when they get there, but it's to get into the system. It's Many are fearful. Well, firstly, I, I sympathise with anyone that has to wait on a trolley for a long duration. Um, but however, we, we are investing significantly in our capital programme. I'm driven uh, the project delivery of the new emergency and uh, at the Accident Emergency Unit in Mayo University Hospital. There's key enabling works that are happening at the minute. Planning has been approved uh, and certainly uh, this will make an enormous difference uh, to uh, it's ensure so that... It's so protracted. It's going on forever. We're hearing the promises, but we're not seeing well, the well, actual it, beds or the building. Well, planning has been approved and I can guarantee the people here listening today that the key enabling works w- were crucially important to allow for the main construction element of this project. And what we will have... Uh, when construction starts in 2025, we will have a, a fit-for-purpose emergency department, but we'll also have an advanced medical assessment unit, which will be up on the second level, and that will have 10 bays. But the key to this is also investing in our primary care uh, system to allow people not to present to the ED in cases where they have minor injuries or their injuries can be dealt with uh, separately. Uh, and we have more people now working in our health system uh, than we have pre-COVID. We have over an additional 27,000 staff working well, in, in our fairness, health service. In fairness, I think service. money is being spent, but the point is the service on the ground, many are still concerned that they're not getting what they need. 
Yes, and, 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 and again, we, we need to continue to resource adequately on the ground with nurses, uh, with doctors, consultants, and we are doing that because the, the facts don't lie. We've over six nine 9,376 additional nurses and midwives mm-hmm. in our health service at the minute with an additional... Um, we have, 4, we have in, vacancies in social at Mayo yeah. University. Yeah. And, and that is a challenge. Right. That is a challenge. Lie. You're absolutely right on the facts don't lie. There was over almost a thousand um, cancellations in Mayo University Hospital throughout 2023. That's a thousand people who had their procedures uh, cancelled in it. We have all the vacancy rates there. Why would, the, if everything was going okay, why would the, the INMO be outside protesting? What we don't need is more of the same. And that's what I and Jerry Murray are going to make sure within within the, 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 within the county. Okay. Here. I think, I think what Rose, what Rose failed, failed to say earlier was that Capital investment will also be happening in North Mayo in both sure, Belmullet and in Ballina in election. terms of an additional 50 unit bed unit in Belmullet and that will provide for short term and long term care which again will free up there capacity. Time frame? Again it's gone to the design phase so these are real projects that have a project life cycle Subject and it's really, it's really important that that is stressed that we need to increase capacity all across the network here in Mayo and not just at Mayo yeah. University Hospital. You know, that's subject to funding. You have to remember it was Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael that closed down the But Rose, you've campaigned about it. This they government has delivered them. about it. Right. This government has delivered it. OK, at this point, we'll take a commercial break. We'll be back after the break. And you're welcome back to our election debate in studio today. We have Minister Alan Dillon, Deputy Rose Conway Walsh and candidate from Castle Bar, Stephen Kerr. Now, we have been speaking about a number of issues before the break, but what has come up quite a lot and we have a lot of questions in from listeners is why won't the government communicate with communities and be honest when plans are in place to accommodate I-pass, asylum seekers or refugees in new accommodation centres in Mayo communities. Stephen, if I can start with you, I know you're not government, but you are saying this is one of the big issues you are seeing on the doorstep. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you're talking about consultation. I can't tell you the amount of emails I've sent to Roderick O'Gorman's department asking various questions about I-pass accommodation. Uh, in this county, and I just I don't even get an acknowledgement. Never, n- never mind a response. Same goes for Alan Dillon. I have to say, Alan, I don't know you personally. I'm sure you're you're a lovely fella and all that, but I don't get a response when I email your office, uh, and that's the problem. So just to let people know, we're spending five million euro a day on accommodating asylum seekers and refugees. That's just that's not including um, medical cards or any other expenses. Just on the accommodation alone. And every door I knock, it, there's so many problems out there. Like people are just surviving; they're they're not living their lives. There are so many issues, and yet we have five million a day just for starters to throw away on accommodation. The majority uh, of I, I wouldn't call it throwing away. People have to well, have a place to live. Well, that's fair enough. You say that, but there was a, a leaked memo from the Department of Justice stating that the majority of IPAS uh, applicants coming in are economic migrants. Now, as well as that, let me say that 80% of the uh, 80% of the applicants that arrive at Dublin Airport that fly in, they get on wherever they get on with a with a passport, and they get off with none. Now, that's a criminal offence. Those people should be detained and should be deported or sent back to wherever they came from. That's that's an illegal offence, and we're not deporting anywhere near in the numbers that we need to be. We so, do need economic migrants, though. We need people to take up jobs. I mean, we were talking about jobs like in the medical field, uh, so many uh, services, everything. We need economic migrants. The country won't survive without them. So, well, well, if that's your, your argument, Theresa, that you want to put to me, well. Look at we're stripping all these these unfortunate countries of all their doctors and engineers. If that's the case, you know, if there's a, they're not all doctors and engineers, as I said, that memo, that leaked memo from the Department of Justice, said that the majority are economic migrants. So come in here because we give the best benefits. Okay, well, uh, Minister Dillon, would you like to respond to that? Your office doesn't respond to a citizen. Yeah, well, listen, I, I, I'm not sure what the, the the issue is there, but like, listen, I, I've I've seen um Stephen's platform and I think certainly he 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 has a focus in relations to migration but is one that sows division uh, in my eyes uh, and he tries to d- divide communities and like what I feel in relation to the immigration challenges is that we do have an obligation under international law and human rights uh to uh, have an obligation to comply with uh, international law and I think it's really important to have compassion and empathy to those who are seeking asylum here or protection 
uh, and we have made immense uh, progress in relation to uh, reviewing the current regime that's currently in place in terms of trying to get quicker decisions. We've also... OK, uh, but why don't you communicate with communities? Well, there is, there is a community engagement team and I take, for example, uh, in, in, in an international protection centre in close uh, proximity to Castlebar in Brafie, uh, there's been an, an amazing integration process there in relation to how people have uh, brought this community together, how they've integrated them into the schools, uh, and they actually are providing a service. Many of them are working in retail, in hospitality, uh, and giving back to the community. Okay. I think that's key to this uh, discussion is how we actually support the integration process. Okay, but the question uh, again, why not communicate? People, do, the minister says there is great communication. The ground, people on the ground would indicate that that is really what bothers so many people, that they're not getting answers. Yeah, and that's it. And I think that speaks to the fact that this government have failed on immigration and uh, they fail to learn from everything in terms of communication with uh, communities. But that's why we have said as well in terms of the location of bypass, it absolutely should not be developer led. There has to be an audit of communities. There has to be respect for communities and the people who are coming into this country and who are legally entitled to be here have to have their human rights upheld as well. And if people aren't entitled to be here, then they have to be sent back safely to their own countries. So your manifesto way. is you'll do that much faster. Oh, there's a proper way of doing this. Let oh. us say there is movement across the thing. Well, we said we would set up an immigration management agency to take control of this. I think part of the problem, Teresa, has been spread over different departments. No, it's not my pro- problem. It's not my responsibility. Nobody is responsible for it. We have to do this in a proper way, in a fair way and in an efficient way and in a way that everybody is treated properly. But uh, communities must be respected. But I do want to say here in Mayo, there are wonderful examples of integration over the years, not just in this recent thing we had Mayo Intercultural Action before and in other and I want to thank those communities for going above and beyond but there is no point if the services and the supports and the infrastructure and the infrastructure isn't there and isn't front loaded that should not be the case and it should not happen this disjointed thing of people making millions and billions on the backs of the most vulnerable uh, people who are coming in and most vulnerable communities is not right Okay, right Uh, Minister Dillon the system needs to be more uh, agile it needs to be robust, it needs to be rules based uh, and that our borders need to protect it and we all agree in relation to that but our system needs to be firm and fair uh, and we have made additional measures in terms of the Garda Immigration Bureau, we're now doing doorstep checks on air, air, air flights, uh, on risks for those who are coming here uh, undocumented but we're also ensuring that we've an accelerated decision making process. Much done, much to do is uh, what you're saying. And we've tripled the amount of staff in, in the International Protection Office to, in order to get processes and applications uh, and decisions quicker. Stephen? Um, all the major parties are, are trying to act as if they're on the side of the people now with this issue, but it's too late in the day. Uh, regarding Sinn Féin, I can't tell you the number of protests I've been at over the last two years where inevitably at some point the chant breaks out, Sinn Féin traitors. Yeah, incitement that, to hate, that, that, Stephen. So you, I will excuse not me. indulge well, in so, Sorry now. So, what are you doing? Sorry. The, the, if you're talking about... Well, if you want to bring up hate speech legislation... No, uh, I incitement know, to hatred. I know, I know that, but, you, but I want to talk about, now that you brought it up, the, the, the hate speech... Yes, uh, which we voted the hate against. Crime. Yeah, but the would first, you, the would first you spread the first lies that we didn't. Excuse, let me okay, just make we it probably, clear. To be votes, perfectly honest, there were two votes, and yes. the first one you voted in favour of it. When we had the the two weeks ago, only yeah, two no, weeks ago, did one. we or did we not vote against it? Did we or did we not vote against the, the hate very, speech the bill? Very Will you answer that, the, please? Oh, yes, you did, and that's yes, why you bring okay. it up. The first bill, wh- so. which was... Sir, sorry, the first, the first bill, bill... which was which the Shana that which we put okay. in Okay, sorry, Stephen, just, just finish your point. point. Yes. You need to get your facts right. Hold on, Deputy. Hold on, Rose. All right. the, f- the first vote, which included the hate speech element, they voted in favour. Sinn Féin voted in favour of it. This is... The hate speech. The hate speech. Okay, all right. I have to move it on. Literally, our time is off. It flies by, and people will have to investigate that more themselves. But in less than a minute now, I'm going to ask each of you what do you see as your greatest achievement to date for County Mayo, either as an elected representative or as a community activist, Minister Dillon. Your single greatest well, well, achievement. Well, my biggest achievement is helping thousands of uh, people right across Mayo over the last four and a half years to representations made on behalf of the Department of State agencies. I've ensured that every opportunity that Mayo re- receives its fair share of investment funding through infrastructure, to sporting facilities, community development. And politics for me is all about people. Uh, and what I want to do is improve the lives and the communities of the people that I represent. Stephen? Uh, well, uh, unlike my... my uh, 
two friends in studio here. I'm not a politician. No, I, have no ex- I, have no, I have no experience in politics. Uh, but what I, I do have experience in is caring about my community and telling the truth. And what I've done over the last two years is tell the truth and tell, tell what, is, what is happening in our communities, which these uh, two people beside me here, well, M- Minister Dillon and Rose Conway Walsh, have failed to do. Well, they, they're not, I'd no say one, both are sitting there, so I'll let them speak never for themselves, seen, I've, but I've I would assume I've, they would I've, 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 utterly I've reject ne- that. I, I have never, I have fairly, never seen yeah. them no, at any It's about protest. you. It's about you now, not what they're doing. Yeah. Just so, ask you So what, I, what I've done is I've engaged the public and I've told them exactly what is going on in their community when their media and when their politics politicians have failed to do so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You need to tell them the truth. Deputy but, um, I would say I would say mine is standing with the families for the over 10 years now with the families impacted by pyrite in this county. I fought every step of the way for them and that's why we guarantee them a 100% redress scheme and a full public inquiry into the pyrite scandal. And many scandal. questions have come and in on that but in fairness that. we didn't get to them but thank you to Minister Dillon, to Deputy Rose Conway Walsh and to Stephen Kerr. On Monday we're joined by candidates Lisa Chambers, Martina Jennings and Joe Daly, thanks for your company.